Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to take a look at at finding. We're going to find. Oops, we're going to find type two error. Type type two error. And and the power of a test. The power of a test. Okay, so let's let's review a little bit. Remember a type one error. Type one. A type one is the probability of rejecting the null. Rejecting the null hypothesis when, in fact, the null hypothesis is true. And this, this is the level of alpha that we've been using in our hypothesis tests. Now, the next part is a type 2. And this is a new calculation now. Type 2 is the probability of rejecting. Oops, I'm sorry, not rejecting. That's just not rejecting. Not Rejecting the null hypothesis when, in fact, the null hypothesis is false. Is false. This this is beta. Okay. Now, what we also what we really want is the power of a test. The power. The power of a test is the probability of rejecting of rejecting of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false because that's really something that we would hope happens well that is the complement so notice the power is um, is just is just 1 minus the prob what we already know and that's the probability of not rejecting well that is beta so those are our three calculations that we have here today. So let's set up a, a null hypothesis. Suppose we have the null hypothesis is the null hypothesis is that our mean our mean is 10 and our, our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is something less than 10. Okay. Now we're going to assume that we have a normally distributed population that sigma is known. Sigma in this case we're going to use it. We're going to use some simple numbers. It's more of the concept that we're after. Sigma is 2 and um, we're going to just assume that we just looked at samples of size 4. So a fairly small sample size. Now here's what we're going to do. So if I start with this picture, I'm going to bring my picture over here. And I'm, I'm kind of drawing this by design because we're going to need to. So uh, here's my my mean of 10, and let's see. Here's my here's like 11. Oops, 9 and 8 and 7, 6 and 5. Okay, uh, 7. There's 11, 12. Well, let's. Um, I'm just going to sketch here. I'm going to just kind of try to. Do, we're going to need a little ceiling. So I'm going to try to sketch a normal distribution here. Really looks about about like that. There. So there's my normal distribution. And let's do this. Let's use alpha. Let's use a little bit. Use something to. Little different for a change. How about 0 0.075? Okay, there's our alpha, and let's let's put that. Let's use use that. So at alpha is 0 0.075. If you look in your table of values or use a software package, you would find or your calculator that z your your critic not z but your critical value. Find you have a critical. That doesn't look very good. You have a critical value equal to negative 1.44. Okay, now 
I know that this that's going to be somewhere maybe in this region over here, but let's actually, in order to put that on the scale, let's actually convert that into what data values this correspond to? What sample data would that be equivalent to? Well, what we would do is we would use our formula that z is equal to x bar minus the mean divided by the standard error of the mean, which is really sigma divided by the square root of our sample size. All right, in our problem here, what we have is we have a sample, our z is negative 1.44. If x bar, we're gonna find minus the mean, the mean is 10. We're gonna divide that by the standard deviation, which is two, divided by the square root of our sample size, which is four, that's a, I have a square root of four. So if I solve this, a little bit of algebra, I can get that x bar is equal to 10, uh, right? yeah, 10 minus 1.44, which is, I hope that's right, it's 8.56. Okay, uh, oh wow, that was pretty uh, pretty close. Um, so my, my data value that corresponds with alpha, this is alpha over here, is 8.56. Okay, so the probability uh, that x bar is less than 8.56, that is our alpha value. And that is also the probability of, of rejecting rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, if your null hypothesis is correct, then that would be a type one error. If, but what if, now let's add a piece. What if, suppose, suppose that your null hypothesis is false. Oops. Suppose your null hypothesis is false. All right, well, if your null hypothesis is false, well, then what we, we really would want to reject our, our null hypothesis. So, so in that case, this would be, this would be ideal. But look at, look at this. If I was to get any value, any value here in this to the right, all of these, well, in, in that case, then I wouldn't reject the null hypothesis. So that, it looks very probable that that might happen. Okay, now, suppose, suppose our null hypothesis is in fact false. So what I really want is I want values that are out here so that I can reject this. Now, suppose, and suppose it's false, and, let's put a comma, and, the null hypothesis, or we know, we better know, better by like maybe we've done some additional research and looked at previous studies, we know that mu is not 10, but it's seven. And this, and again, it's the same population, so we'd use our same uh, standard deviation. So mu is seven. Well, let's sketch that onto this picture as well. So if mu is seven, well, and everything else being equal, I'm gonna have a picture now picture that's going to have the same distribution, but it's going to overlap. That's kind of just a coincidence that mine are overlapping exactly that spot. They don't have to. Okay. Well, look at this. So now that we know the real information, now that we know the real information then, is that all of these values all of these values out here, those, if we got that kind of an, a data value, then what we would do is we would not reject the null hypothesis. So that would be a type two error. So any test value, these are all, these are all type, these all, any data value out here creates a type, this is the type two error range. 
two error range. All of this. Okay, we don't want that. So, what now? Now, here's the interesting thing. If the real null hypothesis, or the real mean of the population is seven, you, when you actually go and you start conducting this research, it's, you're going to find most of the data sets actually closer to seven. That's what would really happen. So, in this case, as it look as we've drawn it, the probability of a type two error in reality is fairly small. But let's calculate it. Well, that type two error, the probability of create of one, is actually this red area, and it's based off the blue curve. So the probability. So let's find that. Let's. So we're going to find the prob probability of type two. Type two error. First thing we need to do is we need to find our z-score. So z-score is going to be based on this, the new mean of 7 and our critical data value of 8.56. So 8.56 minus the 7. We're going to divide that by the standard deviation, which is still 2. And the sample size is still the square root of 4. Well, what is this going to be? Well, I kind of picked that on purpose because 2 divided by the square root of 4, that's just 1. So 8.56 minus 7 is 1.56. If we you look it up in our table of z scores or our calculator, if I look up 1.56, if I look up 1.56, then the probability of this type to error is equal to 0 0.0594. That is the probability of a type 2 error. Now, a few last thoughts. Here's what they are. Oh, one more. The power. What's the power? Well, we said that the power, oh, and the probability of type 2 error, this is beta. Oh, goodness. I Got too far ahead of myself. So now we found beta. So the power, well, we said that that is 1 minus beta. That's 1 minus 0 0.0594. And I should use a calculator. I think this is zero, uh, 9406. That's the power of the test, meaning that's the probability in this example that we would reject the null hypothesis if it was, in fact, false. So how do you control these things? They're, they're actually, you can never get rid of one. You, you can reduce one by, at the expense of the other. So look at what we could do. So one, one way that people, we can work on this is suppose that instead of using a significance level of our, our alpha of 0 0.075, maybe we use a 0 0.01. Point, yeah, point zero 0.01. So it would have been the 8.56 would have been shifted to somewhere way out here, way out here. So now the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis would just be that little tail. Well, but look, but in this case, we want to reject that null hypothesis. So, but look at what happened. By doing that, we increase, look at, look at beta now. Beta is this huge area. Beta now is all of this. So by reducing the probability of a type 1 error, making it very unlikely, we made the probability of a type 2 area bigger. And similarly, if we wanted, so if we decreased our, prob our alpha to like 0 0.1, well, if, then we would, if we put this to 0 0.1, say I put it over here to 0.1, well, then my, what I would be doing now is then I would decrease. I would be decreasing the probability of type 2. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry. By increasing alpha to 0.1, then I would be decreasing my probability of a type 2 error. And so you always want to decide in the case of your test which error has um, more unwanted ramifications or just be aware and how to know how to deal with each of them. I think that's everything you need to know. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.